Right, slightly different video today. We're back in the classroom. So, you know, with social distancing, I'm finding it a little difficult to make some videos. But these classroom ones are pretty good. And George has set me up with this software so I can record the screen. So, what am I logged into here? So, this is the JLR ECAT system. So, I have to pay to have access to this system every year. Um, but I've got the same access to information that the dealer network has in terms of looking up part numbers. The only thing I can't see is I can't see the dealer cost price. I can only see the retail price. And also I can't see stock quantities that are held at Land Rover for certain things. So what can we do with this? So we can look here. Um, when we come, we can select here. We can select Jaguar. And we can see the range of Jaguar cars and we can select Land Rover and see Land Rover cars. Now, when we go in, um, so let's pick a car. Let's go. We're doing some Evoke stereo stuff. So let's go in and look at Evoke speakers, for, for example. So when you come in now, if I knew a specific, if I wanted to look up a specific part that was fitted to a specific car, I could enter the chassis number here and then it would only show me bits fitted to that car. But... I want to go in and look at different speakers and amps fitted to different Evoke models to try and work out what parts I need to upgrade my system. So um, this is what I do when I'm looking at that. And I'll go into parts and I know because I've been in here a few times. I don't live in here, but I have been in here. But if I go into body electrics um, and look along here, you will see up here we've got speakers. So I can dive into the speakers thing and whoa, hold on a minute. What's going on here? Right. So what have we got? So it's showing me various different specifications for regional models. And this, if I hover over, it expands. You can see this is the Halewood, which is the UK plant. And this is the standard audio system. OK, and then then this one will show me the parts fitted to the Highline audio system and this one to the premium system. When we go to these others, these are the ones in um, this is the Brazil, and obviously they've got three specs for the Brazil one. And interestingly, I can go and look what the Chinese assembled evokes were built with. So I've actually got some pretty interesting information. So if I, let's go into, which one should we go into? So let's go into the base audio system. So when I go into the base audio system, I can see the speakers that are used. Now I could cover this a little bit in that speaker upgrade video, but what, what you see is we have drawing numbers and part numbers um, so this is where it gets a bit interesting so if I pick a part so what we can see here what's fitted to the car but if I pick this base speaker right this this is showing me right so this is the Land Rover part number so this is if I go into Land Rover or I go online and I want to order the part this is the number here this part number what I need to order right whoa gosh but this part number here it also has an engineering number now you might think what use is the engineering number most land rover parts physically on them have an engineering number so often on ebay if you find an item for sale you want to look up what does that engineering number translate to in terms of a part number or price and what vehicle is it fitted now this is the system we looked at the lr cat the free online website you can't see any data for engineering numbers. So that's tricky. Right. So I've got this speaker here. I've highlighted it. I've clicked on one. I've got a part number. And also here you can see a price. So this is including VAT. This is UK pounds. It's 51 pounds. Right. Um, so that's all quite interesting. Um, I can also then go on and look. If I click this arrow here, I can cycle along the various ones. And this is the high line audio and then I can go to the top line and this is the specification here. So and I can so actually I can pick this speaker. So let me pick this speaker again. So the bass speaker. OK, and I can actually pick this this speaker here and I can go and look what else that was used on. So I've got that part number there. Let me copy it here. I could have copied. Well, I'm going to copy that part number. And if I put it back in at the top here, and if I select part number, and I put that part number in, 
in theory, this should tell me all the vehicles across the Land Rover network that use this part number. So here we go. So this is telling me it was only a speaker used on these two systems. Let me just make sure I've gone back to the home page. Search again. Yeah. So it's used only used on the Evoke. That um, often you get multiple things that it's used on. All right. Okay. And there's the diagram for it. So as well as being able to explore through the graphical thing, I can also look up part numbers here. Now I can also look up engineering numbers. So let me show you how that works. So if I just pick a random listing on eBay, this guy here has got this speaker and he's telling me the engineering number. So let's have a look. Has he shown us a picture of the engineering number? He might have done there. So this is what the engineering number will look like. If you can see in the middle of the screen there, you've got that BJ32. I think if I move my cursor to it, I lose it. Hold on, there we go. See here, you've got BJ32 18808DB. Right, so if I... So he doesn't really say what that fits. I don't think if he even knows. Um, so let's copy that part number there. And we can put this back into. Now it's not a part number we're looking at now. It's an engineering part number or an engineering number. And if I put that in, unfortunately it doesn't like spaces or dashes. Let's take that out. And if I search that, it should tell me what vehicles that's fitted to. So it's interesting. So it was fitted to the Freelander 2, it was fitted to the Evoke, it was fitted to the Discovery Sport. So already I can see if I want to upgrade my Evoke speakers, I might actually be able to look for Discovery Sport speakers on eBay. They may be more common. And you can also see that, that this was all fitted to the 1200 watt system. There's an odd one here with 600 watt, but with premium sound. So I'm a bit confused. Um, but there we go. So we've got all those. So, and I can also see what the price is. So I can see here that to buy that would cost me £37.50 plus VAT. So I know what it's used for. I know I can look at the, if I'm interested in putting these in my Evoke, I can see where they were used in the Evoke. Now it hasn't highlighted it for me, but I can see here the drawing number is... 18808E. So I need to look around here. There's B, there's C, there's D, there's E. So I can see that it's used here and it's these two in the back. So this is actually that this guy's selling the surround sound speakers you need if you want to upgrade your Evoke, which I did the video on the other day. So that's quite interesting there. And they're cheap at eight pounds each. I have a feeling he'll sell those quite quick. They're the crossover speakers. Right. Um, there's a couple of other interesting things. So if I go back and let's um, now. Right, one thing I will do a little sneak preview for those that are watching. I will do a separate video and I will go into the new Defender and we'll look around some of the stuff um, in the new Defender. But I'll do that in another video because there's you see they've already put all the all all the things online. We can already see how the cars put together so that's quite interesting but enough of that right let's go back to the home screen um right and let's go and have a look at something i wanted to show you discontinued part number so let's go back into where we were in the evoke and let's go back into the body electrics do 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 body electrics let's go back into speakers now this one i was looking at earlier the premium speaker you will notice that Right, so let's pick a speaker. Let's pick it. It was that door speaker. This, when you, if you get to use this, one of the things you'll notice is this OSI. Now, I don't know what OSI means. If anyone does, and I'm sure someone does, comment in the comments below and let us know. So this is saying this is the speaker, and this is used from chassis number where it's got nothing here. That's from launch to chassis number C8. Okay, and it had four of them, and the unit price was 37. But it's got this OSI. Now this means it's been re it's been superseded. So the part number has been replaced for some reason. Right, but it should be interchangeable, the replacements. If I click on this, it will show me the history. So it started off life as this part number here, which was the one we were just looking at. This 2587 you can see in the background. Then it changed to 
three two six three five which i'm sure if we look there we go it actually went to this one here which corresponded to a late a chassis number but is interchangeable then it went to the two seven zero two which is this one here and then eventually if you order it now the one you will get will be a two five four one here which is this one down here so let's just go and have a look at that so so it's going to be the 254 one, which actually was fitted to later vehicles. But that's the one you've got to buy. Now, here's the bad news. Look, that's now, originally that one was £37. But now when you have to buy the superseded part number, it's £65.39. So this is some of the stuff that you can see. So hopefully now it's given you an indication of how to look up stuff graphically how to establish engineering part numbers, how to look up costs, how to look up options that were on different models, and also to cross-reference. Now, there is one more thing I'll try and show you. Let me have a look. If I pick this one here, let me pick that one there. Right, now, this is interesting. So, we're on this one here now. So, this is a speaker here. It's a mid-range speaker. It's call-out B. So, it's this one here that's in the door. That's the bass door speaker, bass as in boom boom, not as in lower spec. This is the mid range, okay. And what you'll notice here is there an equivalent part number. Now this is actually a Jaguar part number. So this is the Land Rover part number. This is the engineering part number, but the engineering part number applies to both Jaguar and Land Rover. They use the same engineering numbers, but they use different part numbers. So you can actually look at that. I might better go on eBay and look for one of these. Let's go on eBay and look for the Jaguar part number. Someone might be selling one. There you go. There's a brand new speaker there. Um, left, right, Jaguar. So sometimes you'll find something um, interesting. Let's do an eBay search for the Land Rover part number and see if we can find one of those cheaper. Sometimes you'll find Jag stuff more available than Land Rover. Let's have a look. Land Rover one. Oh gosh, you see, there's they're all parts of other systems there, and it hasn't found any. So sometimes looking for Jaguar, it's exactly the same part. It's got the same engineering number. It will look the same. So this system allows me to look at, and and interestingly, if I take the Jaguar part number, I could see where that was used. I could cross reference on the engineering part number. But I can also use the Jag part number. And see which Jaguars that was fitted to. It's not showing me any, which is confusing. There we go. Right, so it's got the XF and the F type all use that speaker system. Right, I think I'll end that there. I will do a Defender one. I will go and have a look inside the Defender. We'll have a look at what's interesting. We'll have a look at what parts are used on the new Defender. We'll pick some part numbers maybe the brakes, and see if they're getting parts from the L405 or the L494. But I'll do my homework on that before that. Hopefully that's helped it. So this is Jaguar Land Rover ECAT system. Um, what information you can see and how to use it. Now, lastly, Land Rover didn't want to give access to independent repairers and companies like ourselves to this system. But the EU forced Land Rover to do it. They had to make information available for people and independent garages to fix cars for people. So I don't know where you are on the whole EU Brexit thing. Um, but one thing the EU did do is force companies to make information available to everyone, which, which I think is good. But they were allowed to charge for it. I can't remember exactly what we pay a year for this. It's around three or four hundred pounds for a year's access. Um, there we go. Hope you've enjoyed it. Good luck.